Hey, hi, TJ Pandora Tier here. I'm coming to you from the Dragon and the Rose in Santa Ana, California. Hello. And I am recording today because there was something I wanted to talk about to you today. And I did get some questions, some more questions from you from the other day. And I'm going to try to cover everything as much as possible. Firstly and foremostly, I want to apologize because last week I did not mention the company that makes the Pandora Pagan, Pan Pan Pagan patches that you see before you. Um, the company is called Pins and Maggots. And you can find them on Etsy and on Facebook, Pins and Maggots. Or you can also find them at the Dragon and the Rose at the shop. So either way... Uh, I did get some questions. One of the questions I got, um, dear Auntie Pan Pan, what are your takes on people who wonder if they've lived different lives before? That was from Serena. Now, hi, Serena. Um, there's so many different facets to that. I'm going to actually go into that on another episode. So stay tuned. I have got your question. You will be getting a pan patch. I just... There's more to it than that because there's stuff about genetic memories and there's like two or three other questions from other people regarding past lives. So that's next week. But I did get another question. Uh, Dear Auntie Pan Pan, what do you do when you feel a spirit around you, but it's not an evil one? It feels nice. It's a nice one and it makes you feel safe. That came from Anna in Anaheim. Well, Anna from Anaheim. Uh, basically... Um, if you feel safe around the said individual, the spirit that's around you, and you feel safe and you feel no shred of evil whatsoever, I mean, a lot of people think would think, oh, it's not a good spirit, it's trying to trick you, or woo -woo -woo. If it's a friendly spirit, it could be a relative that's already passed on, and it's watching over you or protecting you. I mean, it could be that, or maybe it's just you're in tune with the elements around you. It could be a multitude of of different things but for the most part if it feels pretty chill it's a chill spirit you don't really feel like it's bothering anybody let it be you know if things get weird that's when you need to do stuff but if it's pretty chill ghost or a chill spirit great aunt tessie is coming and hanging out for you with tea that whatever you know if you feel comfortable so be it anyway but thank you for asking. So uh, we will have Pan Pan Patches on their way to you soon. Now, this was actually addressed and brought up to me. And we were talking about it last week. And I kind of dropped it and kept going. Today, I want to talk about Shufflemancy. Okay, Shufflemancy is kind of important in our modern techno-pagan age. And as you all know, this is all for entertainment purposes only. Uh, you know... We, you know, who knows what's going on out there in the known universe. I'm kind of thinking that I'm the dividing line between the eternal skeptic and the eternal other side. So somewhere in between, here we are. Hi. So Shufflemancy, in case some of you don't know, Shufflemancy is the use of an electronic media player, such as an electronic playlist, uh, an iPod or your MP3 player or your music player on your phone, Oh, or on your laptop, where in one skips a certain number of songs and the lyrics and or tune of the song is the answer to the divinatory question. Thank you, Wikipedia. Because I had to look that one up. Now, I've also been researching Shuffle Mancy for a very long time. It's one of my classes that I do talk about in my Divination 101 class over at the Dragon and the Rose. Now... FYI, for your information, there is nowhere, anywhere on the internet that actually has a history of Shufflemancy. Everyone in the techno-pagan land naturally is assuming that in Technomancy that they created Shufflemancy due to the MP3 player or the Pandora, Spotify, whatever. This is actually not the case. Shufflemancy has been around longer than the MP3 player. Okay. Shufflemancy is older than iPod. It's older than iPad. It's older than MP3 players. The compact disc even. Shufflemancy has, can really be seen starting as early as the beginning of radio. 
Okay, because radio has been around probably since the 1880s, I'm guessing 1886, I believe. And since the beginning of radio being used in common homes and households, sometimes people would pick up on frequencies, so to speak, and certain songs that people would be playing from the 20s, 30s and on, you know, you can't tell me that some flapper didn't wasn't thinking of something and a song came on and that was it. I mean, come on, Charleston? Really? Come on. You know, radios with dials, what's really ironic about this is that radios with dials to tune into various stations are the concepts that some divination dial-up boards would use to obtain oracle-like answers for questions. So why wouldn't the actual radio itself be used then for actual shufflemancy? Just a common sense kind of thing. Even the word shuffle, what was used on... The word shuffle, by the way, in shufflemancy, um, was a device used on... Compact discs, C CDs, compact discs for some of you that are in the millennial and millennial age, um, was when you had a device that could play five CDs at a time and at random, and you put it on a setting called shuffle. Hence, shuffle, Mancy. You didn't really know what song was coming on next. Now, we can even get older into that because jukeboxes, shuffle, Mancy. Jukeboxes used vinyl um, LP or vinyl 45 album records. You know, you can, the list can go on and on. Sometimes you had a jukebox set. Um, you also have eight track tapes that sometimes if you were playing a certain eight track tape in a car that you were not sure what song was going to come on next you kind of and if it was a song you really wanted to hear you had to click it four or five times to get back to the other song that was before that song this is so showing my age isn't it yeah anyway eight track tapes could also do shuffle mancy and i was saying with jukeboxes could also do shuffle mancy it it just depends it didn't matter the type of the media it just happened and radios have been around since oh god when so how typically is shuffle mancy used okay what happens is you have a music random selection you switch it to shuffle on either nowadays most people because hi we're lazy people because you either use Spotify or Pandora, YouTube, uh, music shuffling, whatever music selection playlist you've got either on your phone, your MP3, or your iPod, iPad, i whatever, I don't know. You have a question or random wandering, and the answer will come to you via the song being played. So my song, uh, we'll get in that in a minute. Some people have an actual signature song for a signature event or a specific song for a specific prayer or deity. Now, I, I know that whenever my friend Addie hears the song Hell's Bells by ACDC or Highway to Hell, she is prepared for something crazy, bat guano, unusually crazy to happen. She's now ready for it. And nine times out of ten, she's right. It's happened. I've watched and observed it. So someone I saw online was talking about Shufflemancy, and she worships the deity Bast, who in Egyptian, for those that don't know, is a really big kitty cat. So she's a big humanistic goddess deity of a cat. And she knows that her goddess is thinking about her whenever she hears the song Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. So Shufflemancy really means many things to many different people. I know when I work in certain, when I'm really, really angry or I'm really like wanting to work on a spell that's like channeling my anger and getting it out of my system, the song I listen to is The Beautiful People by Marilyn Manson or The Perfect Drug by Nine Inch Nails. I use it to your own discretion to think of what kind of music selection, selection does Pan listen to. So Shufflemancy can also occur, by the way, when you turn on the television as well as with the remote. You get the result, what you're looking for, if you use the remote. You ask a question. I've had this happen. You ask a question, you turn the TV on to a specific channel, and boom, there's the answer you were looking for. So 
However, I do sometimes wonder if cell phones, flat screens, and tablets can also be considered a type of black scrying mirror, technologically speaking. So, because, I mean, if you think about it, here you've got a tablet. It looks an awful lot like a black scrying mirror, doesn't it? Yeah. So some kind of parables, that's what you get with dealing with a lot of techno pagan -y things is sometimes we just merge certain things together. Like a cell phone can be a scrying board or a tablet can become a black mirror. So, and I'm back. Okay, just so you know, with black scrying mirrors and technology, that black scrying mirrors have been used for century. I will do more on this in another episode about scrying mirrors, but... Basically, if you look at all flat technology, it should all be considered useful for both shufflemancy and mirror scrying. So just a little FYI there for you. Flat screens especially can be used for that. It's kind of fun. Um, I do remember in the 1970s when my mom would be driving her old Comet and she would ask a question and what she'd do is turn on the radio. And usually the answer that she was looking for would be playing on the radio right there in that time. That is still a form of shufflemancy. When a DJ chooses a song at random and you happen to tune into the song on the radio at the same time, DJs, disc jockeys, that some that even play at clubs or radio stations, this is all forms of shufflemancy. Bear in mind, music is a form of ethereal or it's an air sign type of element thing. So this is dealing with air. So last time I checked. <laughs> Um, I've had a certain song that reminds me of someone and I decided to call them only to find out they were either just thinking about me or needed my help right then and right there at that particular moment. That is also Shufflemancy. I hope this helps. Maybe you can try experimenting with Shufflemancy, see if it's your kind of thing. Some people just go, oh, okay, I didn't know I was even doing that. And that's a cult. You know what? If you think it is, that's great and hip and groovy for you. But if it's just something that you notice that you've done all your life, then okay. It's just a form of scrying. If you scry it, they will come. I wish Zen hugs to everybody. And remember also, you've got different types of techno-pagan things out there. You've got cybermancy, which is divination by the study of computer oracles. That gets into computers and laptops. That's cybermancy. You've got videomancy, which the study of divination with the use of film. So if you want to flip channels, you would probably want to say videomancy. So maybe it's not you know, shuffle mancy as much as it is video mancy, but it's kind of both because if you're flipping channels, it's kind of both. Then you've got techno mancy, which is divination through the study of all technology. So you kind of, it's a new thing. It's within the last hundred years, at least, at least 100, 150 years. So it's kind of new. Um, I want to thank uh, the Dragon and the Rose for letting me film here. Thank you so much. I would like to thank Pins and Maggots for all of these wonderful, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful patches. Thank you so much. Um, uh, special thanks to Anna for her question. Serena, we will get more into past lives next time. So as for now, I wish you all Zen hugs and be Zen and happy and blessed be. Bye.